welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Profile Ragnarika Okay, so I want to say like I'm going to be doing a different style of the deck profile video for Ragnarika. It's going to be bigger, more detailed, and I'm not going to be doing part two and part three. We'll only have just this one big, huge video that will cover everything. So make sure to check the description and the pinned comments. In this video, I will have the profile of the deck will be shown. Then I'll be talking about key cards, key spells, key extra decks. We will go over the combos of the deck. I will go over as well grading the deck for Yu-Gi-Oh! Realism. Finally, I will also go over as well the other things with Ragnarika. We're talking about the side deck in detail, how you can play around things. And then we will just give um, a play guide as well about like the several lines you can take with Ragnarika, the several outstanding plays you could take, the different versions you can go. I'll have the AI explain that and showcase the versions that you can go there with the lines explanation. Okay, with all that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. <laughs>
monsters. So let's talk about one of the key monsters in my Ragnarika deck, which is Ragnarika the Evil Seed. Please, just right. Um, so this is the key level one monster in this deck. Although it does give you a hard lock if you read it, that when it's special summoned, you can only uh, special summon insect, plant, or reptile monsters for the rest of the turn, such is life. But it is your starter, it is your enabler, it's everything in this deck. Nice! And it's vital that you have this card and you use it as often as possible. So this card, generally, most of the time, is going to add you this spell card and this monster, most of the time. As its effect states, it allows you to add two Riker cards with different names. These are the two usual targets that you're going to add most 100% of the time. It may vary from time to time, but usually these are the targets you'll add. Okay, let's move on to the next key monsters. Our second key monster in uh, uh, this Ragnarika deck that I've made is Lonefire Blossom. Not much should be said about Lonefire Blossom. It's not a hard once per turn. That sounds broken. Tell me more. You can tribute it, special summon any plot monster from your deck. You can keep rinse repeating this card over and over and over again. From death comes your birth. And we're definitely going to be abusing this card as much as possible. Facts. As this is a card that, if your hand is not the best, you can use its effect to special summon the evil seed, as we showed earlier, back onto the field. It's going to allow you to do just a myriad of things, which is just absolutely crazy. It's also one of the cards as well that's going to allow you to build that uh, insane board, as you're going to be able to use its effect later on in your combo to special summon Scorpio. Scorpio is then going to use its effect. Obviously, as you know, Scorpio is going to allow you to special summon Darlington Cobra. And then Darlington Cobra's effect is going to allow you to add Instant Fusion. And then once, so we'll just go there again with Instant Fusion. And once you have Instant Fusion, well, the world's your oyster. As we're going to go with Instant Fusion, special use the Instant Fusion, get our Sartanus. Sartanus is then going to add ourselves the one, the only, the key car, the key trap of our deck, which is fly stick. And would you look at that? From just a lone fire, we can do so many things. Lone fire is bay. Lone fire is life. Lone fire is everything great about my Riker deck. It's all coming together. And I definitely recommend any version of Riker that you play pure, unless it's mixed. I try to keep mine as pure as possible. Sure, I do use other cards. I, w I do use Trap Tricks Mantis in the build so that we have a negate for hand traps such as Nibiru. But in general, this deck is as pure as, it as we can get with regular Riker. Let's move on to the next key monster. And here we have our final key monster in Ragnarika, Ragnarika Samurai Beetle. Two is the best number for this job. Indeed, this is the card that begins all of your combos. If Lonefire and Evil Seed starts your combos, this is the card that accelerates it. So what's its effect? Well, this card has the special ability that if it is used for a Link Summon for a Ragnarika Link Monster, it allows you to special summon any level 4 or lower insect, plant, or reptile from your graveyard back onto the field. That's right, they still get their effects. There are no limits to the power of this card. So you'll use that effect typically after you've used it for, you, after you've used it for a Link Summon, and you're usually Link Summoning your key extra deck monster, which is Skeletal Soldier. Your Link Summon Skeletal Soldier uh, with Samurai Beetle's effect in Graveyard, bring back Lone Fire, and you know where it goes from there. Lone Fire is then going to special summon your Scorpio. You know the deal. Scorpio is then going to... Is then going to get you your is then going to get you your Darlington Cobra. Darlington Cobra is then going to get you Insta Fusion, and from Insta Fusion, you'll get Sartanas, 
right there and whoops let's just uh clean that up there you'll get sartanus right there and then from sartanus it'll add you fly sting remember everything about samurai beetle is quite fantastic it's just it's your combo enabler this is the card this is these are the three key monsters in Ragnarika that i have at the moment lone fire being one of the most lone fire obviously being important as it bridges the gap between both of them but generally these are the key monsters in your deck and definitely the ones you wanna avoid being negated if you can well let's move on to key spells and here is our key spell Ragnarika Bloom Ragnarika Bloom is the rotor for the deck the searcher the card that brings about everything of your wildest dreams Time to kick ass. So why is this card so important for Ragnarok? Well, this is a card that's going to allow you to add the monsters in your deck. So it'll allow you to add Ragnarok uh, Evil Seed and Samurai Beetle. But uh, the other card as well, which I don't mention a lot, is the Armored Lizard, right? We only play two of these, the Armored Lizard, but in general, 90% of the time, the card you're going to be adding with, the cards you're going to be adding with those two are going to be Evil Seed or Ragnarika Samurai Beetle, as you see there. The armor, this card, the Armored Lizard, is generally going to be added when you're just doing some extension plays or stuff like that. So it's not really the card you're going to be adding 90% of the time. Okay, that's it. Let's go forward to the next key spells in my Ragnarika deck. Okay, and so we're going to talk about one of the key cards, which is, as you can see in front of you, one for one, as I point to it there. One for one is important as this is the card that's going to be able of allowing you to special summon the evil seed. We also have a way of getting one for one pretty easily if we get hand trapped as we have the triple tactics thrust yes we'll have that so that we can add that one for one as you see there pointing to it relatively quickly relatively easily and so as you know with evil seed we can go into our full combo i'm not really going to re-explain that you can see that um part of the video in the key monster section anyways we're then going to talk about gold sark Gold Sark there, as I've pointed to it, is quite important for this deck, as this allows you to get those negates. If you remember before, I was talking about how we this deck is vulnerable to Nibiru. It is really imperative that you do something about Nibiru, otherwise Nibiru is just going to end your, your, your life. And so you'll usually, with Gold Sark, you'll banish Resonance Insect. Yeah. Now, the reason why I do not mention Resonance Insect in the key monster section, as Resonance Insect is your problem solver. Resonance Insect is the card you'll usually banish to deal with loads of problems that you encounter or that you face in your playthrough or in the decks that you face in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! So, let's talk about how Gold Sark here helps you dealing with problems. First, you're going to use its effect to banish gold, uh, Resonance Insect. Resonance Insect's effect, when it's banished, allows you to send an insect monster from the deck to the graveyard, including itself. So, But usually, you're going to send Goki Pole, right? Here's where it gets interesting. Goki Pole is then going to allow you to add a level 4 insect monster from your deck to the hand when it's sent to the graveyard. The insect monster you're generally going to add 90% of the time is Traptrix Mantis. When you'll normal summon Traptrix Mantis, you're then going to special summon with its effect Aaron Camper, which Aaron Camper will have been added with Traptrix Mantis, as you can see right there. You will then use those two cards to overlay into your um, hand trap or Nibiru Negate before the fifth summon, which will be Rafflesia right there. Okay. I think we've covered everything there. And so now we'll go to this card here, Trap Tantalizing Tune. So what's that card's effect? Well, it's a normal spell with an effect that 
you can discard level 4 plant monster or normal trap to draw 2 cards. Um, that effect is pretty good, it can help you in a pinch, but what we really need is that graver effect right there. As if we zoom in a little bit, we can see there from the graver effect, as it states, you can use, you can banish level 4 insect or plant or normal trap, uh, place it to the bottom of the deck. Now, that's important. Because as we've talked, as I've talked to you about this deck before, we don't seem to have a grind game. The grind game seems to be non-existent. And you must be wondering, oh no, what do we do? How do we recur resources? How do we recur all these things? Don't worry, my friends. Don't worry. How I've built this deck, everything is life. Everything can recur itself. And so this is the card you're typically going to be searching with your link three. Now, what's your link three? The link three here that we have in this deck is Mantis Monk. Mantis Monk is what's gonna be searching your hunting dance, but that's not important at the moment. What matters now is that with Trap Tantalizing Tune, as I've put there, is when you'll use hunting dance's effect um, to banish itself, to pop a car, to pop a monster on your opponent's side of the field, you'll use this graveyard card's effect so that you can return a banished trap or insect back into your deck, bottom of the deck, obviously, which means you can then research it again next turn with Mantis Monk. Rinse, repeat the entire cycle. Okay, and that covers the key spells in Ragnarika. Okay, so let's talk about key extra deck monsters. So, one of those key extra deck monsters is, as you can see here, as I point to it, Ragnarika Skeletal Soldier. Skeletal Soldier is your key extra deck monster in this deck. This card is going to be just absolutely amazing, as it has the ability to revive a Riker monster from your graveyard, not Lynx, obviously, but all your main deck Riker monsters. You're going to be using that effect quite a lot in the combo. Usually you're going to be, it doesn't really matter what you revive. Most of the time you'll revive this, but it doesn't really matter. Sometimes you'll revive, um, let's go to that card again, Evil Seed, you know. On the rare occasion you will revive Lizard, but 90% of the time these are the two cards you're going to be, one of these two cards you're going to be reviving with Skeletal Soldier. Now, midway during your combo, you're gonna be making yourself this Mantis Monk, as I point to it there. Mantis Monk's gonna have the ability is that while it's on the field, you can banish an insect, plant, or reptile monster from your graveyard. Yes, no spells or traps, allowing you to add a Riker Trap. Currently, we only have one Riker Trap that exists in the deck, which is Ragnar Riker Hunting Dance, as you can see there. Um, do we get any more uh, Riker Traps in the future? No, in Infant Forbidden, we do not get any more Riker Traps, sadly. And then we'll have our trusty old Rafflesia, as I point to it right there. Rafflesia is going to be extremely important, as we can usually make that underneath five summons. So we're definitely Nibiru proof. When, when nothing ruins the game plan. Outside of that, um, your targets for it are going to be obviously the Grave Diggers Trap Hope, which you're going to play, and your other targets that you're going to have are going to be as well the Time Space Trap Hole, just to deal with those extra deck monsters. And that's about it. Let's move on to the next key extra deck monsters in my Ragnarika deck. Okay, and so we will have the next two key extra deck monsters in my Ragnarika deck, which will be Trap Tricks Atipus, as you can see there, in Giant Bee Trooper Invincible Atlas. Now, the Giant Bee Trooper Atlas is usually going to be made after we've used the effect of, um, let's go to it, Instant Fusion here. Instant Fusion is then going to allow you to, usually at the part of the combo, we'll special summon Sartanus, and Sartanus is going to, for the rest of the turn, lock us to only special summoning Insect Masters. And the Insect Masters, we're going to summon is going to be giant B trooper invincible atlas when we will link summon that that means that we will have 
a B Trooper on field so that B Trooper Fly Sting is live. Okay, that's about it. And so what is Atipus 4? Atipus 4 is really there to close games. Um, it's basically our access code talker in this deck. As it's unaffected, with its effect, it's unaffected by by trap effects. So floodgates, I'm not going to work on this thing. It will still be there. And usually, with the way the board is, right? Um, just another fun fact. Rag Ra Ragnar Riker Bloom here, as if we can read it, gives all plant, reptile, and insect monsters a 300 attack point boost. So usually it's going to be on 2,100 attack points. But because there'll be a normal trap in your graveyard usually, which you will get there with... Um, and the normal trap that will be in your graveyard... Let's see, what is it going to be? If I can just get to it... Um, it's going to be the Gravedigger's Trap Hole, as you see there. So generally, this card is going to be at 3,100 attack points. It's quite a beefy boy, right? And we'll usually use that to close games. As its effect is, it's not hard once per turn, right? But you can pop cards equal to the amount of insect or plant monsters you control. Usually your final end board is going to have four to five. Going to have quite a lot of insect and plant monsters mixed in. So you can usually just pop cards the way you would do with Access Code Talker and just close games and just win right off the bat. And that's about it. Let's talk about the other extra deck monsters that we have in this deck that we don't use. We talk we that we use like that come up. This is part of the combo. We will use Sartanus there so that we can add ourselves um the fly sting. I think you know that from before. Um other cards we're gonna be using is when we will have those two level three Predator plant monsters on the field as part of the combo, which I'll show you in the combo section. We'll make Cicada King, so we'll have another gener uh, monster negate there. Usually, after turn two, and if your board still survives, you're going to be making Ragnarika chain coils, so we can stop those hand traps further, and we can go and close the game out. So that's usually a game closer, and we'll and then we'll have Insector. Picofalina. Usually we will make this um, for the grind game so that we can recycle back our Atipus and all these other cards, insect key cards, and we can go for more stuff from that. Um, then if we really are in a pinch, we will be making Ragnarika Stag Sovereign, our Link 5. Um, this is a card we usually make when our hand isn't the best, when we don't have the best resources or we've sort of bricked. We usually try and end on Stag Sovereign. It's not usually the card that we're ending on um, most of the time, 90% of the time. It's usually a card we're ending on when things are not going our way or we need to clear some cards. It's very rare that we go into this card. We do go into it, but not all the time. And that's about it for our key extra deck, Monsters in Ragnarika. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to start the combo section of this video. So let's draw our starting hand. Draw. Ragnarika, the evil seed. Draw. Resonance insect. Draw. Lone fire blossom. Draw. Called by the Grave. Draw. Ragnarika Armored Lizard. Let's begin this turn. Time to kick ass. So, first things first, I'll activate the effect of Ragnarika in the hand. Its effect states that I can special summon it by sending a plant insect or Reptile from my hand to the graveyard. I'll be sending Lone Fire to the graveyard. The effect of Ragnarika, the evil seed. When I activate it, I'm allowed to add two Ragnarika cards with different names. I'll be adding two cards, which will be Ragnarika Bloom and Ragnarika Samurai Beetle. So those are added to the hand. 
the additional effect of Evil Seed. When Evil Seed has successfully uh, resolved its effect, this allows me to banish one card from my hand. I'll be banishing Resonance Insect. The effect of Resonance Insect. When, when Resonance Insect is banished, this allows me to send an insect monster from my deck to the graveyard. I will be sending the one and only Goki Pole. At this point in time, if you're hit with an Ash Blossom on Resonance Insect, well, it's not happy times. That really hits where it hurts. Anyways, we're just going to take into consideration that you haven't been hit with Goki uh, with Ash Blossom, so the effect of Goki Pole will activate. Since Goki Pole was sent to the graveyard, this allows me to add a level 4 insect from my deck to the hand. I'll be adding Trap Tricks Mantis. Okay, so let's continue with the plays. Our normal summon will be Mantis. The effect of Mantis allows me to add a Trap Trick Monster from my deck to my hand. This allows me to add Trap Tricks Aaron Camper. Next, I'll activate the effect of Aaron Camper. If I control a Trap Tricks Monster, I can special summon this card. And when I do so, I am locked to special summoning plant, mo plant and insect monsters for the rest of the turn. Also, with Evil Seed, when it was special summoned, I was locked to special summoning insect, plant, or reptile monsters for the rest of the turn. But now, essentially, I can only special summon insect monsters. Next, I can use the I can special summon Samurai Beetle by returning a banished monster back into the deck to special summon. Here's where things get really interesting. So, let's continue. You'll activate the effect of Lone Fire, tributing itself to special summon from your deck, Scorpio. Scorpio's effect activates. When Scorpio is, is normal or special summoned, you can send a monster, which will be the Armored Lizard, to the graveyard, allowing you to special summon a Predaplot monster from your deck onto the field. That's really convenient. You'll special summon Predaplot Darlington Cobra. The effect of Darlington Cobra. When it is special summoned, it allows you to add any card that mentions polymerization or fusion from your deck to your hand. The card you'll be adding is Instant Fusion. Coincidence, I think not. So, at this point in time, you are now going to activate Ragnarika Blue. So right there, let's move everything so that you can see how everything is. Right? You're seeing everything, and you can see it all right there. So you have it all there. Okay. So, we will then activate the effect of Ragnarika Bloom. Bloom will allow us to special summon. We will use the effect that states that... So, with Bloom's effect, we'll use the effect that states that allows us to special summon a Ragnarika monster from our graveyard or banish them. We will bring back Armored Lizard that we discarded. That will be here. So we'll move that there so you can see everything. And this will be there. Right? And we'll have Bloom there. Okay. We will then activate the effect of Skeletal Soldier. Bringing back... Our Ragnarika monster from our graveyard. Return, once again, Samurai Beetle. Now, what we will do at this point is we will overlay these two cards in order to make the one, the only, Circada King. At this point in time, right, if you're hit with a hand trap, you do have the call by the grave in your hand, so you can negate it. So you're pretty much, at this point in time, you're pretty insulated. So in your hand, you should have call by the grave and instant fusion. Um, if not, whatever version you're playing, Insta Fusion will always be in your hand because of Darlington Cobra. Anyways, let's continue. So at this point in time, you are then going to Link Summon, Skeletal Soldier, and Lizard, right? They'll go to the graveyard in order to get our boy, Ragnarika Mantis Monk, right? So... You'll activate the effect of Ragnarika Mantis Monk. This will allow you to banish 
to a level four or lower insect, plant or reptile from your graveyard to add a Ragnarika trap from your deck to the hand. So you're gonna banish Gokipo, because you don't need this anymore, and the Evil Seed, so we can use that for next turn. And uh, then we're going to add Ragnarika Hunting Dance. That'll be added to the hand. Um, we will then activate the effect of Ragnarika Skeletal Soldier. Now, one thing that's very important is that all Ragnarika Link Monsters have this, have this effect. When they're, while they're in the graveyard, you can return an insect, plant, or reptile monster from your field back into the deck to special summon them. So, we'll return the Samurai Beetle back into our deck to return, once again, Ragnarika Skeletal Soldier. It's back. Okay? We'll move that there. We'll just we'll move some stuff there so that you can see everything. At this point in time, so this is how our hand is looking at the moment. Okay? And so, several things will happen. So at this point in time, we're going to set the hunting dance. And also, please remember, because of uh, Ragnarika Bloom, our insect, plant, and reptile monsters get an increase of attack of 300 Attack points. The truth you made him know. That includes defense as well. So they both get an increase. So things are quite beefy. We will now activate the effect of Insta Fusion. We'll pay a thousand. Bringing back special summoning from our extra deck. B Trooper Cruel Satanus. Onto the field. You know the deal. The effect of... Um, B Trooper Cruel Satanas allows us to get a B Trooper card from our deck to the hand, which is B Trooper Fly Sting. And as you know, with Satanas' effect, when it is special summoned, I can only special summon insects for the rest of the turn. That's right. So we can just set this card. Um, we will then link those two off because we can only make insects. And you know what's coming. Our boss monster appears once again, giant B Trooper Invincible Atlas. There. And so that is the field. Okay, we have Fly Sting here. We've got Hunting Dance there. Skeletal Soldier is there. Raflesia is there. Cicada King is there. And that's there. Um, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, this is the board. Now, if you do get hit with hand traps, you will, you will have times where your board will look like this, where you will only have Cicada King and you won't have Rafflesia. Other times, if, you're, if you play around stuff, you may end like this, where you don't have Cicada King and you have Rafflesia and the traps. There are going to be some other times where you just don't have B Trooper Fly Sting and it's in your graveyard. And then in the end phase, you'll banish Sartanas and then you then reset it again. There are just many instances where there's just things can just go off the rails, but as long as you stick to the game plan, then everything is fine. Okay, so let's talk about the side deck. So our side deck includes Network Trap Hole to stop decks that, you know, like to link summon. Um, for a lot of summons, we will have Bottomless Trap Hole. We have Floodgate Trap Hole as well. We also have Trap Tricks um, Whole Nightmare to stop that SP Little Knight if it ever comes up. And the Banished Trap Hole as well. All for uses for whatever matchups that we're, that we're doing. This will all be used under the guise of Trap Tricks Reflesia. Okay, that's about it. Let's uh, go on to our next side deck cards. Okay, and here are the next series of cards that we have in our side deck. We have Catty Corn here. Catacorn's effect is that if it is special summoned you can control and you control no cards in your field zone, you can add one uh, field spell from your deck to your hand. So it's very really important. We'd usually be special summoning that with Loon Fire Blossom. So we can, you know, we can side it out to have one of our spicy field spell tech like Summon Breaker, meaning we can end an opponent's turn or summon over whatever is needed so that we can out... Uh, send monsters from our opponent's field. Um, 
obviously these two cards are just example of uh, field spells which I like, I feel are useful, but in your deck, in your version of Ragnarika, you can choose whatever field spells you want to choose because Catty Corn just states it can add any field spell. Again, this is quite useful with Lone Fire there. So bear that in mind. Okay, let's move on to the next side cards we have in our side deck. Okay, and here are some more side deck cards that we have. Um, let's say we have a problem. Let's say that, you know, we go game one and our opponent has a boss monster that we cannot out in any way. We will add one of the kaijus, depending. Either Cumongous, if we want to just blow go over it, or um, Gardala. Usually, we're going to just side in the Cumongous. And you're wondering, how are we going to add Cumongous? Cumongous is going to be added with the effect of Samurai Beetle. Now, if you remember in the play that we had before, we would usually banish um, Resonance Insect and then send Goki Ball. But if we're going game two and we know our opponent, right, has um, a really nasty monster and we can't really get rid of it, we will use Resonance Insect's effect, send itself, right, and then on the Link Summon with Skeletal Soldier, we will bring back Resonance Insect that we've sent to the graveyard. When this card is on the, f uh, when it's you, when it leaves the field upon Link Summon, we can add then, uh, we can add a level five or higher insect monster from our deck to the hand. Essentially, we will add Cumongous. Um, this same strategy can be applied again for Bear Grum, right? Bear Grum can be added with the same strategy. The same thing can be said with Gardala. Um, however, let's say uh, we know our opponent has a nasty Synchro that we just can't get rid of. So let's say we're going game three and we're going first. We would send with Resonance Insect, obviously, instead of Goki Pole, we would send Shiny Black Sea if we are maybe facing that Sword Soul matchup or Synchro matchup or, you know, Dragon Dragon Link matchup. You you get the idea. And we can just negate the summon of um, the Synchro Monster with Shiny Black Sea. Well, you, you know the deal. And if we want to win in time, obviously we're going to have um, Skull Ladybug. And we're going to send it with, you guessed it, with our Lord and Savior, Resonance Insect. Resonance Insect is life. Resonance Insect is bay. Resonance Insect is everything. If there's a problem we need solved, leave it all up to Resonance Insect. Okay, we'll move all those there. And that's it. Let's go to the last uh, card in our side deck. And here is our last card in our side deck, Insector Earwig. Now, this is, the, this is the Link Monster that we have in our extra deck. And we usually use this in the grind game. But let's say we go to game two and we just see that our opponent has a big, beefy monster and we just can't get over it. Um, usually we're going to have the, 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 you know, giant B Trooper Invincible King, that link, or let's see, what is it again? Let's have a look at it again, because we don't know the name. Um, usually going turn two, we will have this bad boy. We'll make, we'll make this Tag Sovereign, and usually it's going to be on 3,600 attack because of um, Ragnarok Bloom giving all our insects, reptile, and plants a 300 attack point boost. We would then equip it with the insect or earwig, giving it an additional 1,000 attack points, meaning it's going to be on 4,300. 4,300 is quite beefy and is usually enough to go over loads of things. So that's essentially it, really. And that covers everything in our side deck. Alrighty then, so I'm going to have the AI explain the several lines that you can go through with Ragnarika. With that being said, we'll have the AI here show you the several lines that you can go through with Ragnarika. Let's continue on with the rest of the video. Here is my starting hand. Let's show the Predator Plant line. I can special summon Ragnarika the Evil Seed by sending Lone Fire Blossom from my hand.
After the effect resolves, I can banish one card in my hand. Ravna Rika the Evil Seed Effect I can add two Ravna Rika cards with different names from my deck to my hand. Since Evil Seed has resolved I can at this moment activate the effect of Resonance Insect. Which states when banished, I can send an insect monster from my deck to the graveyard. The insect I will send is Goki Pole. Goki Pole's Effect When sent to the graveyard I can add a level 4 insect monster from the deck to the hand. Come to my hand, Traptrix Mantis. Next I will normal summon. Traptrix Mantis. When summoned, I get to add a Traptrix monster from my deck to the hand. This is all predetermined. Appear in my hand Traptrix Arachnacampa. I will use the effect of Traptrix Arachnacampa in my hand. If I control a Traptrix monster I can special summon this card. When I do so for the rest of the turn I can only special summon insect and plant monsters. I overlay Traptrix Mantis with Traptrix Arachnacampa. XYZ summon Tra Traptrix Rafflesia, I can special summon <laughs> Ravna Rika Samurai Beetle, by returning a banished, insect, reptile or plant monster from banishment to deck, I will link summon using Ravna Rika Evil Seed and Ravna Rika Samurai Beetle. <laughs> Ravna Rika Skeletal Soldier, the effect of Ravna Rika Samurai Beetle when used for a Ravna Rika Link Summon. Revive a level 4 or lower insect, plant or reptile from your graveyard. Return from Limbo. Lone Fire Blossom. <coughs> Lone Fire Blossom's effect I contribute a plant monster to special summon a plant monster from my deck. <coughs> Appear Predaplant offers Scorpio when normal or special summoned. I can send a monster from hand to the graveyard to special summon a Predaplant monster from my deck. Here is where the Predaplant line begins. With Cobra's effect I will add Instant Fusion. I will activate Instant Fusion to summon Predaplant Ambulomelides. Predaplant Ambulomelides effect. If this card is fusion summoned, you can add one Predaplant monster or one Predap spell slash trap from my deck, graveyard, or face up extra deck to my hand. I activate Predaplant Bufolicula in the pendulum scale. I fusion summon with the effect of Predaplant Bufolicula. For Predaplant Dragostapelia. I fusion summon with the effect of Predaplant Bufolicula. For Predaplant Trifi over Udum. Alright, let's grade Ragnarika as a deck. So, before I continue with this uh, grading, let's talk about this deck. As you've seen, as I've explained with the couples, uh, with the lines and everything else, there's a lot of potential with Ragnarika. So, why is it graded as C? is a rogue deck at best. Um, the amount of advantage that we ha you can generate with this deck is pretty low. Unless you're playing um, Rika, you know, Rika Rika, that has a higher ceiling. And usually with Rika Rika, you don't really need to play a lot of the Rika main deck monsters. You just need the, the Ragnar Rika link monsters. Anyways, when, if you're playing Rika Rika, then that's, you, that's the version I'll say you play if you want for a competitive play. However, if you want to see what Ra Ragnar Rika actually does, then definitely facilitate the, the version that I'm playing because you'll definitely get to see what Ragnar Rika as an archetype does, the ceiling that is facilitated here and all manners of interesting and 
interactive gameplay that you can see here. So the issue with this deck is that why it just cannot enter the competitive scene, I just feel, is it has several points of failure. Um, with Branded at least, the only point of failure is Branded Fusion. If that gets ashed, you can play around it. There's several things you can do. The problem here is that we have three points of failure. We have Ragnarikar Samurai Beetle. If that gets negated, you are not doing anything to advance your game state. No matter what version of Ragnarikar you are playing, if Samurai Beetle is negated or stopped in any way, you are screwed. Same thing with Ragnarika Skeletal Soldier. If this Link 2 is negated or stopped in any way, your turn ends right there. Another point of failure as well is Evil Seed. The is not, not really Evil Seed, but Lone Fire. Lone Fire, again, is another the card that you really can't play around. These are the three pivotal cards in I found for pure Ragnarika. Lone Fire, Ragnarika Samurai Beetle and Ragnarika Skeletal Soldier. These three pivotal cards, it is imperative that they go through, that the effects resolve. If one of them, if one of those effects, one of those cards does not resolve, you're in, in a world of hurt. You're not making a board that is decent. You're making a board that's just going to get cleared and get destroyed. Another issue with this deck is that you do not have spells and trap cards as well. While yes, we do have ways, we do have follow-up with Resonance Insect, and as I was jokingly there, they're saying that Resonance Insect is life, Resonance Insect is bay. One of the issues with this deck is that you have, with the points of failure, as I've said, those three cards that we've mentioned, this means that you are just in this format, everyone, is playing so many hand traps. You just cannot survive here. And I stress this enough, this deck cannot survive. You are not topping any event with pure Ragnarok. It's just not happening, guys. I'm sorry to say this, you just cannot do this. Even if we get uh, the version, even if we get, you know, Infinite Forbidden and it gets more support, Pure Ragnarika is not topping anything. The version that I'm showing you right now, it has extremely a lot of potential, but again, that potential is completely, um, uh, you know, squandered simply because it just does not generate as much advantage as the com competitive decks that we've got at the moment. You have um, Snake Eyes, Diabell Star, that generates advantage like there's no tomorrow. You have... Um, purely as well that generates a huge amount of advantage whether it's Unchained whether it's um, uh, you know Labyrinth we've got Branded as well that has not a lot of points of failure we have Voiceless Voice again generating a loads of advantage again we can see a mixed version of it with Melodious the point is is that there's not a lot of good things going for Ragnarayaka. We've got loads of locks in the deck for a start, meaning that we can't really, uh, the amount of experimentation is completely limited. Um, we get hit with a lot of hand traps. And while yes, it is true that Nibiru is not in our meta scene at the moment and Droll has somehow vanished, but make no mistake, we have a Manadium syndrome here. If Droll is dropped, we are ending our turn. If Nibiru is dropped, we are ending our turn. If Ash Blossom is dropped on the right card, you guessed it, we are ending our turn. We have too many points of failure here, and this is why it's a C at best. Um, it just can't do it. Ragnarika just can't handle this. And this is what I just want to uh, hit home to you guys. Whoever is playing this deck, a pure version of it, or is making a version of it with trap tricks, whatever it is, just play it in your locals. Play it, you know, as a fun deck, as a deck for just casual. But do not take this deck to a competitive scene. It's going to get slaughtered. It's going to get annihilated. You just can't handle it. To make this deck competitive means that you're not playing Ragnarika at all. Again, if you want to make uh, Ragnarika competitive, just play Rika Rika, where you just slap in some of the uh, Ra uh, Ragnarika Link Masters and call it a day. Just do not try. I do not trust Ragnarika at all with any competitive play. You're just gonna go nowhere. With that being said, 
I'll end the video right here. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.